Welcome to Buford Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you chose to worship with us this morning. If you are visiting and would like to learn more about the church, please check out our website at www.bufordpres.com. That's B-U-F-O-R-D-P-R-E-S dot com. You can also follow us on Facebook. Simply search for Buford Presbyterian. We hope you will join us again next Sunday. May the peace of Christ be with you today and every day.
Good morning and welcome to the service of worship here at Buford Presbyterian Church, wherever and whenever you may be joining us on this first Sunday after Christmas. We hope that you had a wonderful Christmas and stayed safe and healthy. Let us worship God. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Join me for the call to worship. In the violence of domination, the anguish of desperation, the callousness of isolation, God comes with us, despite us, and for us. We tremble at such redemption, yet we have hope against the cacophony of fear. In joy, we add our voice. Let us now join together for verses 1, 2, and 4, Angels from the Realms of Glory. As we look to the new year, we hope for an end to the polarization and division that have scarred our country and our world. We yearn for peace with justice, and yet we know that we have not always lived as those who are formed in the peace of Christ. We confess our sin assured of God's mercy and empowering grace. Friends, let us pray. Merciful God, we confess our complicity in the divisions that have wounded our country and our world. We have been silent when others are disparaged or held in contempt. Indeed, we ourselves have harbored ill will in our hearts. Forgive and restore in us your spirit of compassion and justice-seeking love. It's in the name of the Prince of Peace that we pray. Amen. Friends, hear the good news of the gospel. In Christ, we are forgiven and set free from sins that bind and enslave us. God's Spirit has been sent into our lives and our world to empower us to live out the great commandment, loving God with all of who we are and loving others as ourselves. Thanks be to God and amen. Good morning, friends. How was your Christmas? 
ours was very different this year. We couldn't gather with some of the people that we usually do at Christmas time. Some of the people that we love most in this world, our parents and grandparents, but we did get to see them on Zoom. That was different too. Even though some things were different, we did try to do some of our normal traditions and the normal things that we do this time of year, like baking cookies and going to see Christmas lights, which definitely helped. In the end, what my family realized though, is that even though some things have been different this year, what didn't change is that baby Jesus was still born once again into our hearts and lives. And so we took some time to celebrate and to give thanks to God for all of the hope and the peace and the love and the joy that we've been given. I hope you were able to find ways to celebrate this Christmas too. You know, scripture calls Jesus Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus' birth, hopefully, is a reminder to all of us that God truly is always with us. That can be hard to remember sometimes when things are difficult or hard for us. It can be easy to feel like God isn't with us, that maybe God forgot about us or left us. But we are reminded again and again in the pages of the Bible that this just isn't true. God is always with us, even and especially in the hard and difficult times of our lives. Our scripture passage this morning is another reminder of this promise. Our passage comes from the prophet Isaiah, who reminds the people of Israel that God is with them, that God loves them. Do not fear, God reminds them and us in this passage. I have called you by name and you are mine. The passage goes on to say, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. And what all of that means is that when we go through all of the difficult things, all of the hard times, God isn't absent. God is right there with us through it all. And do you know why God does this? Walks with us? It says right there in the same passage, God tells us, because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you. Do you know that God loves you just for being you? that you are precious to God. I want you to take a minute and think about someone who is important, precious, valuable to you. Think about how you feel about them, how much you love them and care for them and want to help them. And then I want you to know that God feels like this about you. God loves you so much. Because of God's love, we are able to claim and to use the gifts that God has given us. All of those traits or characteristics that make each of us unique. The things that make you uniquely you. I wonder, have you ever thought about this? What it is that makes you you? I hope that you will give that some thought today and this week, that you will think about what it is that makes you special, that makes you, you. And then remember what God tells us all at the beginning of this passage. Do not fear. Don't be afraid to be you, to share who you are with this world, because this world needs you. Just by being who you are, who God created you to be, you make this world a better place. And when we all do this, when we're all able to be the people God created us to be, 
we help the world know of God's promises and God's love. And that's pretty special. Friends, let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for creating each of us and loving us. Help us to be ourselves. Help us to share the gifts you have given us with others. Help us to share your love with the world. Amen. This morning's scripture reading comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verses 1 through 7. Listen now for the word of God. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Here ends our scripture reading this morning. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A tradition I started several years ago at Lloyd was the Sunday after Christmas reading the book You Are Special by Max Lucado. And so I read it for you today. I hope you enjoy. The Wemmicks were small wooden people. All of the wooden people were carved by a woodworker named Eli. His workshop sat on a hill overlooking their village. Each Wemmick was different. Some had big noses, others had large eyes. Some were tall and others were short. Some wore hats, others wore coats. But they were all made by the same carver and all lived in the village. And all day, every day, the Wemmicks did the same thing. They gave each other stickers. Each Wemmick had a box of golden star stickers and a box of gray dot stickers. Up and down the streets all over the city, people spent their days sticking stars or dots on one another. The pretty ones, those with smooth wood and fine paint, always got stars. But if the wood was rough or the paint chipped, the Wemmicks gave dots. The talented ones got stars, too. Some could lift big sticks high above their heads or jump over tall boxes. Still others knew big words or could sing pretty songs. Everyone gave them stars. Some Wemmicks had stars all over them. Every time they got a star, it made them feel so good. It made them want to do something else and get another star. Others, though, could do little. They got dots. Punchinello was one of those. He tried to jump high like the others, but he always fell. And when he fell, the others would gather around and give him dots. Sometimes when he fell, his wood got scratched, so the people would give him more dots. Then he would try to explain why he fell. He would say something silly, and the Wemmicks would give him more dots. After a while, he had so many dots that he didn't want to go outside. 
He was afraid he would do something dumb, such as forget his hat or step in the water, and then people would give him another dot. In fact, he had so many gray dots that some people would come up and give him one for no reason at all. He deserves lots of dots, the wooden people would agree with one another. He's not a good wooden person. After a while, Punchinello believed him. I am not a good Wemmick, he would say. A few times he went outside, he hung around other Wemmicks who had lots of dots. He felt better around them. One day he met a Wemmick who was unlike any he'd ever met. She had no dots or stars. She was just wooden. Her name was Lucia. It wasn't that people didn't try to give her stickers. It's just that the stickers didn't stick. Some of the Wemmicks admired Lucia for having no dots, so they would run up, run up and give her a star, but it would fall off. Others would look down on her for having no stars, so they would give her a dot, but it wouldn't stay either. That's the way I want to be, thought Punchinello. I don't want anyone's marks. So he asked the stickerless Wemmick how she did it. It's easy, Lucia replied. Every day I go see Eli. Eli? Yes, Eli, the woodcarver. I sit in the workshop with him. Why? Why don't you go find out for yourself? Go up the hill. He's there. And with that, the Wemmick, who had no stickers, turned and skipped away. But will he want to see me? Punchinello cried out. Lucia didn't hear, so Punchinello went home. He sat near a window and watched the wooden people as they scurried around, giving each other stars and dots. It's not right, he muttered to himself, and he decided to go see Eli. He walked up the narrow path to the top of the hill and stepped into the big shop. His wooden eyes widened at the size of everything. The stool was as tall as he was. He had to stretch on his tiptoes to see the top of the workbench. A hammer was as long as his arm. Punchinello swallowed hard. I'm not staying here, and he turned to leave. Then he heard his name, Punchinello. The voice was deep and strong. Punchinello stopped. Punchinello, how good to see you. Come and let me take a look at you. Punchinello turned slowly and looked at the large bearded craftsman. You know my name? The little Wemmick asked. Of course I do. I made you. Eli stooped down and picked him up and set him on the bench. Hmm, the maker spoke thoughtfully as he looked at the gray dots. Looks like you've been given some bad marks. I didn't mean to, Eli. I really tried hard. Oh, you don't have to defend yourself to me, child. I don't care what the other Wemmicks think. You don't? No, and you shouldn't either. Who are they to give stars or dots? They're Wemmicks just like you. What they think doesn't matter, Punchinello. All that matters is what I think, and I think you are pretty special. Punchinello laughed. Me? Special? Why? I can't walk fast. I can't jump. My paint is peeling. Why do I matter to you? Eli looked at Punchinello put his hands on those small wooden shoulders, and spoke very slowly. Because you're mine. That's why you matter to me. Punchinello had never had anyone look at him like this, much less his maker. He didn't know what to say. Every day I'd been hoping you'd come, Eli explained. I came because I met someone who had no marks, said Punchinello. I know she told me about you. 
why don't stickers stay on her? The maker spoke softly. Because she has decided that what I think is more important than what they think. The stickers only stick if you let them. What? The stickers only stick if they matter to you. The more you trust my love, the less you care about their stickers. I'm not sure I understand. Eli smiled. You will, but it will take time. You've got a lot of marks. For now, just come to see me every day and let me remind you how much I care. Eli lifted Punchinello off the bench and set him on the ground. Remember, Eli said as the Wemmick walked out the door, you are special because I made you. And I don't make mistakes. Punchinello didn't stop, but in his heart he thought, I think he really means it. And when he did, a dot fell to the ground. Amen. Let us now say what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Friends, as we pray together this day, I invite you to join with me. At the end of each section of this prayer, I will pause and offer you a time to offer your own prayers, either silently or spoken. And then I will conclude by saying, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to join me saying, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Friends, let us pray together. Loving God, in this season of celebration, we remember all for whom hardship has robbed joy. We remember especially the children in our church family, in our community, and around the globe. We lift before you children who are separated from their parents, who are without a family, or who grieve the death of a parent during this season in which family is our deepest yearning. Help us to be ever attentive to the needs and tender sufferings of children in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Help us to be your witnesses in word and deed in our communities. Empower us to break down barriers that divide your human family, to resist and disarm stereotypes that malign, to stand in solidarity with outcasts, and to hold our civic leaders accountable for our common life and for support of the most vulnerable in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of the nations, we pray for elected officials of this country and countries around the world. Help them resist greed, prideful ambition, and partisan gain in order that they may serve the welfare of all. Inspire them to strive for peace and justice so that all your children may dwell secure, free of war and injustice. Move them to hear the cries of the poor and hungry and to ensure a rightful share of the resources needed to sustain life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As we continue to grapple with the overwhelmingness of this pandemic and the challenges it presents, we pray that you would grant special measures of strength and endurance to weary healthcare workers who labor on the front lines of this struggle and to all who are now facilitating vaccinations. We pray for your comfort for all who are sick and for all who have lost loved ones. Grant us all wisdom and courage for the living of this hour. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to depart today, I leave you with these questions for reflection. Do you believe that God made you special? Do you trust that God knows you and cares for you? Secondly, how much value do you put in others' thoughts and opinions of you? How will you make certain that the dots and stars do not stick? And now go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold fast to what is good, return no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help those who suffer, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, 
and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.